Hello, my peepers. Welcome to A Stitch With Me and a book. Today, we are stitching on Heaven and Earth Designs Chessie artwork by Ash Evans. Done on 25 count Lugana, one strand over one. The book I have chosen is The Daughter-in-Law by Shalini Boland. I love this author. I have read quite a few of her other books. This is what it is about. Your new husband has a shocking secret. Would your mother-in-law kill to protect it? From the moment I meet my new mother-in-law in her beautiful country house, she makes it clear I'm not welcome. Lillian Fletcher hates me for marrying her precious boy on a golden beach far away from her. Starting our marriage living in the Fletcher's family home is a nightmare. Lillian's steely blue gaze follows me everywhere. Then the accidents start to happen, and I know she is behind them. It starts with small things like a dropped birthday cake a spilt glass of wine, but then my mother-in-law accuses me of something terrible. This woman is determined to get me out of her son's life. Now I wish I'd never met my handsome, clever husband or come to this luxurious house that feels more like a prison. But I have secrets too, and no one knows who I really am. Prologue. The torch throws light and shadows onto my rusted spade as it bites into the ground, as it squelches into earth that's thick and sodden with weeks of rain, rain that's still falling, sliding down my face and oozing through my clothes, trickling around my neck and along my spine, clinging to my lashes and soaking my hair, mingling with the damp, hot sweat of my labor. A half moon briefly lights up the night as heavy clouds scud past. The forest thrums with a tattoo of rain and wind, spattering onto leaves and howling through the branches. At least all this water means the ground is soft, which makes things easier. I lift the spade and dump more saturated earth onto the growing mound by my side. The hole is almost halfway dug now, or maybe I should call it what it is, a grave. She's lying face down in the mud. I turned her over so I didn't have to look at her any longer, at those blank features hiding all that hurt and accusation. But what did she expect? After everything she said, did she really believe I would let her ruin it all? Did she really believe I could let her live? One, Carolyn. Or Caroline. The taxi slows to a stop outside a stunning Christmas card thatched pub set back from the road. It's dusted with snow and twinkling with Christmas lights. A warm glow emanates from the windows where I make out the shapes of people sitting, eating, and drinking. It's per picture perfect, making me catch my breath in awe. Seb takes my hand and gives it a squeeze. My heart is thumping so loudly, I'm sure the taxi driver can hear it. Here we are, Seb says proudly, his gray eyes lingering on my face. Home. It's gorgeous, I reply, returning my gaze to the weathered limestone building that has somehow already captured my heart. Seb wasn't kidding when he said Stallbridge was a beautiful place. Set in the Blackmore Vale, just across the border from Somerset. 
It's the smallest town in Dorset. It runs from the church near the top of the hill past the 15th century Market Cross to the narrow high street beyond. Just past the cross sits my new husband's home and family business, the Royal Oak Pub. It's a far cry from my own home, or should I say my old home. This quaint pub in an English village couldn't be any more different to my apartment in the coastal town of Byron Bay, Australia. No, this place is straight out of a Brothers Grimm fairy tale. The main word that springs to mind is magical. Wait till you see inside, Seb opens his door and steps out of the cab. There's always such a great atmosphere. A blast of icy air rushes into the taxi. For a moment, I'm almost paralyzed by nerves. Here I am, about to embark on a new, unfamiliar life. To meet my husband's parents for the first time, maybe even some of his friends and work colleagues. All while still jet-lagged. Seb and I had to take separate flights as I couldn't get a seat on his, but I managed to get one the day after. Perhaps we should have checked into a and b for a couple of days to, to acclimatize first. Too late now to acclimatize? I'm not sure. We came straight from the airport to the place where my husband lives and works with his family. In a daze, I exit the taxi and shrug on my new parka, parka, a gift from Seb. Drawing it tightly around me and pulling the hood up over my wavy blonde hair. It's bloody freezing out here, colder than when I first landed at Heathrow this afternoon. I think wistfully of Byron Bay, of my shared apartment with its sprawling balcony of warm summer evenings and familiar faces. But then I see my husband grinning at me as he walks to the rear of the cab and I remember why I'm here. I return his grin with a nervous smile of my own. Don't look so worried, Caroline, he says, heaving one of my cases out. They are going to love you. Seb's mum and dad are the landlady and landlord of the Royal Oak. But since graduating from Catering College nine years ago, Seb says he's gradually taken over most of the running of the place. All the same, I wonder what his parents are going to think of me, his new wife coming here and inserting myself into their life. I wanted Seb to give them a heads up before we landed, but he insisted that it would be better as a surprise. So here we are, about to break the happy news. Seb pays the cab driver and lifts the two heaviest cases, mine. I take the smallest case, his, and follow him through the wrought iron gate and down the short, well-tended path towards the pub entrance. My breath floats out in white, misty clouds, and my boots crunch and squeak over the snow. Victorian-style lamps light our way, and I feel like I've entered Narnia. There's a private door around the side, Seb calls back to me, pointing to our left. But I want you to get the full pub experience this evening. I swallow and give myself an internal pep talk as we head towards the main entrance. I'm tired and nervous after the flight. That's all. It'll be fine. Seb loves me. I'll get used to living here. This is what I wanted. His family are now my family. I'm sure they'll be perfectly nice and we'll all get on really well. Seb pauses outside a traditional wooden door studded with impressive metal rivets. Ready, he asks. Yes, 
I give a decisive nod and follow him into the pub. The noise and warmth hit me straight away. Laughter, chatter, the clink of glasses and cutlery, the smell of wood, polish, garlicky food, and the tang of beer overlaying everything. I pulled down my hood and let my gaze sweep the room, taking in the oak beams and flagstone floor and the ingle nook fireplace at the far end with a log fire blazing in the hearth. The lawn oak paneled bar is hung with Christmas garlands and fairy lights. There's a good looking guy in his twenties behind the bar pulling a pint. The inside is far bigger than I thought and the decor is like something out of a swanky interiors magazine. The whole place has far exceeded my expectations. Every table in the place is taken. Family groups, couples, friends, all quite expensive looking people in designer clothes and shiny hair. More than a few customers give Seb a nod or a wave. They also give me the once over, not very discreetly, but no one catches my eye with a nod or a smile. I'm a stranger here. Hopefully that will all change soon. What do you think? Seb turns to me with pride in his eyes. It's incredible. Incredible. Beautiful. I love it. Knew you would. It's a proper English pub. I mean, we have pubs in Australia, but this feels different. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's 16th century, so you can feel the history. He scans the room. Mom and Dad aren't here. Let's go through to the back. Hey, Seb, nice tan, a young woman in black jeans and a t-shirt emblazoned with the royal oak walks past, carrying a stack of empty glasses, dark brown curly ponytail swinging, black eyeliner flicks, silver rings, and a silver chain around her neck. She glances at me briefly and then turns back to my husband. How is Oz? Amazing, Seb replies, setting down my cases. I brought back a souvenir. He gives me a playful nudge. This is Caroline. Caroline, this is Mariah. She works mainly in the restaurant, but sometimes helps out behind the bar. Hi, I offer with a smile. Mariah gives me a nod, but no smile. Not exactly a warm welcome, but that's okay. She looks busy. Is mom in the restaurant? Seb asks. No, she's just gone upstairs for a quick bite. I think your dad's up there too. Okay, cheers. See you later. Seb picks up the cases and leads me past the bar. He tries to catch the barman's eye, but he's busy serving a customer and doesn't notice. Seb gives me an awkward shrug and beckons me through a door marked private. At the other end of a corridor, a 20-something blonde guy carrying two plates barges his way through a wide swing door with a circular glazed panel. Seb, you're back, he says. Hugo, how's it going? Busy, he grins. I'll let you go. This is Caroline, by the way. Hi, I wave. Nice to meet you. He gives me a friendly smile as he walks past us out into the bar. Seb leans over and kisses my lips. I'll introduce you to everyone properly once we've spoken to my mom and dad. Sure, no problem. Of course he'd want his parents to be the first to know that I'm his wife. Seb heads towards a set of stairs on our left. Hugo's been with us a year now. He started in wash-up, but now he's part of the wait staff as well. You'll get to know everyone soon enough. We're all like family here. I take a breath and tell myself that it's natural to feel a little overwhelmed by my new situation. I've been used to a life in Australia. This is bound to take a little adjustment. I switch the case to my other hand and follow him up the wooden staircase. 
Up here's the private area where we live, Seb explains. It's a three-bedroom apartment. An apartment, I query. I thought it would just be a couple of rooms above the pub. I thought I told you about it, Seb smiles. I promise you'll love it. My heart is thumping and my mouth is dry. I'm about to meet my in-laws. From what Seb's said, they are great people, but I also get the sense that his mum can be quite stern. She's the landlady of the pub, so she doesn't take any nonsense. That's fine. I'm a straight talker, too. Hopefully, that means we'll get on okay. Seb pushes open the door at the top of the stairs, which leads into a wide hallway with a dark wood floor and thick Berber-style rugs. He dumps my suitcases next to a white marble console table on which sits a vase of fresh flowers, a bowl of keys, and some unopened mail. I set Seb's case next to mine and wipe my palms down the side of my coat. I realize I'm sweating now. The apartment is warmer than I'm used to. We have air con back home rather than central heating. Once I take off my coat, I'm sure I'll be fine. You okay? Seb asks, taking my hand and kissing my knuckles. I nod, but the truth is I'm weary, disoriented, and longing for food and bed. The last thing I feel like doing is meeting my in-laws for the first time. Seb keeps hold of my hand as we walk along the hall towards the sound of voices. The walls are adorned with bright abstract artwork that I can tell has been inspired by the local area with sweeps of green and blue to represent hills and sky. I guess his parents must be in that room at the end. The door is slightly ajar. Seb lets go of my hand and pulls the door open. I hang back in the hallway. Things go quiet for a beat, and then a woman speaks, Seb, you're home. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I can't quite see my in-laws as Seb is blocking the door. As he moves further into the room, I see his parents sitting at a white circular dining table. The remains of dinner on their plates a few potatoes, some broccoli, and what smells like roast chicken. His mom is good looking with glossy brown hair held back in the chignon and immaculate makeup. His dad is a silver fox with broad shoulders and a kind face, an older version of Seb. The room is gorgeous, a perfect mix of old charm Nine, seven, and modern eight, comfort. Eight, but I barely take it in as most of my attention is drawn by Seb's parents, who both stand as he leans in to kiss his mom's cheek. She's smiling broadly and then startles as she catches my eye. She looks to her son for an exclamation as I follow my husband into the room. Hello, Seb's dad says tentatively to me, checking his shirt is tucked in. He gives Seb a hug. My eyes scan the kitchen, taking in the sleek charcoal gray units, sitting confidently alongside oak beams, picture rails, and dark polished floorboards. For floorboards. Mom, Dad, this is Caroline. Caroline, these are my parents, Lillian and Brian. Oh, Lillian frowns and gives me a confused and slightly frosty smile. She turns back to Seb. I didn't know you were coming home today, Sebastian. Who's your friend? How was Australia, Brian asks. Good holiday? The best. Seb puts his arm around me and draws me to his side. He clears his throat. I've got some news. We've got some news. Seb's chest puffs out and he pushes his hair back with one hand. Brian looks curious, but Lillian's face is darkening, her brown eyes narrowing to slits. This is Caroline. She's my wife, Seb declares. 
We got married in Australia. It's so lovely to meet you both, I say, wondering if I should move in for a hug. But I realize a hush has fallen over the room. It's totally silent. You can't even hear any noise from the pub below. I feel like I should say something else to break the tension, but every word I know has fallen out of my head. Lillian hasn't moved, and Brian is naughty. Like one of those toy dogs you sometimes see in cars. Well, Subas asks them, crushing me against him a little too tightly. Aren't you going to congratulate us? Seb, can we talk to you in the living room for a moment? Finally, Lillian moves, tucking her chair under the table. Uh, yes, okay. Seb sounds strangely unsure of himself. Let's all go and have a sit down and a drink. Just the three of us, Lillian says to him without catching my eye at all. The three of us, Seb echoes. I step out of the way to let Lillian and Brian file past out of the kitchen. Seb turns and mouths at me to give him a minute. He follows them out of the room, leaving me standing alone in the beautiful kitchen, feeling slightly sick and wondering what the hell I'm supposed to do now. So that was chapter one. What did you think? think you'll get the book and continue on with it so here is my rating and review I gave this five stars this was another great book by Shalini Bolin and another I couldn't put down so Seb Fletcher meets Caroline online and decides to go to Australia to meet her they hit it off and they get married and brings her back to England to be with him and his family. The mother-in-law doesn't like her from the start, but Caroline is determined to get in her good graces. As we keep reading, we find out things about Seb, things he should have told her. But again, as in this author's style, we get hit with a few things to make the psychological thriller a read you can't put down. I got this book from Book A Tour and NetGalley for the book to review. But yeah, I really, I always enjoy her books anyways, but this one was really good. And the ending, yeah. So, what do you think? You think you'll finish it? I do have the link below for both Chessie that I'm cross-stitching and the book so if you want to get it you can so that's it for today i hope that you enjoyed this and again the daughter-in-law by shalini boland and stitching on heaven and earth designs chessy artwork by ash evans see you all later bye bye